Beethoven's music is life itself. It's full of drama and beauty, torment and pure bliss. It is intense, it is unpredictable, it is full of explosive energy. It speaks to all of us, to each of us, through its amazingly rich array of human emotions. Very often you think you might have his struggle or his emotions when you play his music. I think each and every one of us could find ourselves in Beethoven's music. Uh, Beethoven talks with utmost honesty to his audiences. He is direct, he is humane, he is bold and brave, and most of all he is passionate. And I think the power and the passion of his compositions have become a social instrument. Back in uh, the communist uh, Romania, when it was illegal to watch uh, videotapes, not uh, to mention to have a video player, uh, someone uh, introduced uh, to Romania a videotape of Hamadeus string quartet. I do believe for any quartet player or for any quartet who takes it seriously, I think it is a great task to play all Beethoven's quartets. So in a way, as a quartet, you grow up learning how to play the whole cycle. And if things don't go off the rails, you might go, grow old with Beethoven's quartets. It had such a powerful impact to me that uh, since then I've been playing uh, in lots of chamber music groups uh, as a kid. It is a dialogue between the four instruments. Okay, maybe a bit more between the cello and the first violin, but it, it is a great dialogue and everyone has to, to say something. It's very operatic. I mean, you can listen to it and you can leave the hall and you can whistle to it as you go to a, a opera by Verdi or Mozart and you can leave the hall and you can sing along tunes from the opera. It's very melodious, don't you think? It's very beautiful, so it's very, very... Um, it's not so abrupt and intense as Beethoven's music. It's very romantic. It's very suitable for a summer's day, summer's evening. And... Um, it is full of passion and he, he puts his soul out there. So it is enjoyable to play his music. I mean, everyone uh, would love listening to his music and uh, brings us uh, joy both to the performance and to the audience. And it was a real pleasure to work with my colleagues on the Broding Quartet. I'm going to answer to this question with the words of our first teacher uh, for string quartets, the uh, second violinist of the Amadeus String Quartet, Zygmunt Niesel. Um, we went to London to the Royal Academy of Music to study with him and the very first thing that he told us is that you are going to work with me, Beethoven's String Quartets. And we said, great, uh, which one? And he said, no, 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 all of them. <laughs> you cannot learn to perform of a string quartet as a string quartet unless you learn to play all of Beethoven's string quartets. Beethoven is like Mount Everest that we all have to climb to actually learn how to live, how to breathe music, how to feel music to its utmost intensity. You need to uh, understand the piece before you practice it. So you first look at the score, listen to it, and then you have to address your own part. You have to practice your own, uh, sort out your own technical problems or musical problems, and then try to put that in context, and then meet your colleagues, and uh, <laughs> it becomes even more complicated. <laughs> so it is challenging and it requires a lot of time to learn something new. But even going back to something you've learned before, it's not as straightforward as you would expect. It's obviously easier and it feels familiar going back to it and you recognize it, it's like an old friend, but you always discover something new and there's always something to work on. Preparing a, a string quartet, the piece, the string quartet, uh, it might depend on the piece you are going to play, but it is a uh, 
a complex procedure and it starts with individual practice and then you end with practicing together and trying to synchronize from sounds to thoughts. First of all, you have to do a lot of research and uh, talk about uh, articulation, about yeah, the style of music, if it was an early work or a middle period or late quartet, and uh, try to read, of course, about all the history. He was also a public figure in, involved uh, in, uh, and knew about all the uh, um, historical uh, wars uh, happening at that time. and. Uh, now going to the technical aspect, that's the trickiest one, because uh, once he discovered the metronome and he used some metronome markings, no one uh, until nowadays was able to uh, play uh, at Beethoven speeds. Of course we know that uh, what you, a composer and what a musician have in mind, musically speaking, uh, uh, is not the reality as well. But I think in Beethoven's case, um, we definitely have to try to uh, check out his tempos. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, it's not easy. It's not easy to um, be... Uh, a string quartet is a very, how shall I say, uh, very strange animal. <laughs> he can eat your life and he can let you free as well. He can uh, teach you how to fly and he can devour you. So you have to uh, be patient, to be wise, to learn, 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 practice, practice, practice every day. Um, but I think we have been very, very lucky. We have been very, very blessed and it has been amazing to Performing a string quartet for 25 years, it is a lesson for life, it is not only a lesson for music, it is a lesson for how, how to live, how to cope, how to be compassionate, how to be patient, how to be tolerant, all of those things. <laughs> As I said, in the, performing in a string quartet, uh, it, life is tricky because of course you live 24-7 if you're colleagues which might become three mothers-in-law uh, and uh, um, it's uh, amazing because you can spend so much time together and talk about the music but uh, you have to get to know each other you have to have the same uh, hobbies the same interests just to keep it going and uh, Martin Lovett from the Amados Quartet uh, of course yeah was giving us a piece of advice this, because we were complaining about the uh, yeah, uh, difficulties uh, and the day-to-day -day life in a string quartet. And he said, of course, the first five years are uh, the most challenging ones because this is where a quartet can uh, break or stay together for long. And uh, uh, once you pass those five years, which was our case, he said that from now on, it's only the next 30 years will be difficult. After that, it will get easier. Um, we started very young. <laughs> we are in a play school. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's quite an achievement. We are proud of it. It's not easy, I think, in this day and age to survive for 25 years with the same members as well. And there have been difficult times. Of course, we spend so much time together practicing and everything seems to be so important to us. Music is so important to us, but uh, hopefully it paid off and we enjoy it very much. Life in Galway is really special to me and is so difficult to believe we've been here for 17 years. But when I look back, uh, I have nothing that I regret. And as I said, life in Galway helped very much uh, having a very beautiful life as a string quartet. Developing as uh, musicians and human beings and artists, I mean, Galway is, uh, <laughs> has a huge part in uh, our career and uh, yeah, in our life. So uh, we bring, I think, this uh, free spirit of uh, Galwegians and uh, it's the most cosmopolitan city of Ireland 
and uh, that's a place we feel at home. I mean, that's why we are staying here. We came only for three years. I cannot see myself anywhere else. I think this should be enough. As an answer, it's a wonderful place, wonderful people, wonderful place for music. Um, I cannot see myself in any other place. This is my home.